Good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, depending on when you watch this. My name is Sue Hernicek. I'm the OR director here at Columbus Community Hospital in the new addition for the surgery unit. We're going to be taking you through the new operating rooms, in through the recovery room, and the new outpatient surgery department, formerly known as Same Day Services. So you'll be able to see all of our really exciting new features that we've got. Uh, right now, you're looking at the main entrance into the new five operating rooms. We do have five new rooms, and they are all very large. One of them is a hybrid room, which is theoretically a cath lab, to make it very simple. When we get to that room, you'll be able to see the C-arm and everything else that we have. So it's very, very exciting times for our hospital and for our community, and I am thrilled to be here to be able to take you through this. So as we go through, we're going to badge in, and we're going to go ahead and go into the new operating rooms. We're going to stop right inside these double doors and we have the, the new operating rooms are one big square. And we have operating rooms one, two, and three on this side and then four and five on the other side. We'll take one big tour all the way around so you can see the area. Um, some of the great features, uh, if you notice, our hallways are essentially clear and we have not had that at this hospital since I've been here for the last nine years. So. It is really exciting to have all of the storage that we need and not have patients think that they're taking them, we're taking them through a storeroom. So as we go in, we're going to go into OR1. Uh, we may not go into OR1. Ah. So they are open for a case, which is fine. There's not a patient in there. We're going to go ahead and let the door shut, and then I'll take you into a room where we can actually uh, delve into the features of the rooms. But that is a room. Uh, we have three rooms that are 650 square feet, which is 50 square feet bigger than anything we had before. We have one room that's 750 square feet, and then we have one room, the hybrid room, is almost 1,200 square feet. New scrub sinks, new area. We have uh, our, our equipment for the, uh, all of the equipment in the room. This is, this is the brain for all the equipment in the room. As you can see, it's an incredibly large cabinet, a um, lot of circuitry that goes in there, a lot of work so that the nurses are able to control all of the equipment off of one spot. Um, it's really nice having all the same equipment in the rooms because we're able to control it and just call one person if we have any problems. We have great space for holding for beds. Um, and we're going to go ahead and go into the operating room two, which is our 750 square foot room. As you can see, it's been used today. Has not had its final clean yet. So this is what happens after a case. Um, it's, it's not clean. It's, not, it's, it's just got to get everything cleaned up. So some of the great features about these rooms, um, and we'll go into a, a couple other rooms to show you, but we have now the lights. If you look up at the lights, we have, um, they're split on different mounts, which is really important because what was happening is when the physicians and the staff was trying to get the lights on the patient, they were ending up hitting each other all the time. They would truly just run into each other and they couldn't get the lights tilted the way they wanted. The other problem that we had was they were not able to get the screens where they wanted to see things, so now these screens have capabilities of going all, all around the room. We can go up, down, all around. Um, one of the other great features that I absolutely love is my floors. We have terrazzo floors. It is a poured concrete polymer rubber flooring. We did a three color um, scheme on it so that it's a quick visual for staff to know how far six feet is around the bed because that's how we gauge our cleaning. So this was a very exciting process. Um, they're beautiful floors, they're 100 year floors if you want to talk layman's terms. It's the same flooring that they put into places like the Pinnacle Bank Arena or any of the big arenas where they have uh, basketball, hockey, uh, anything like that. So and I'm sure you can see all of the great lighting in the room. These rooms are really, really bright, which is fantastic. It's not like the shows that you see that have the dark ORs. That's not the way it is. <laughs> So we'll actually go into a very clean OR here very shortly. The rooms all do look the same. On my left, it will be the entry into the recovery room. We'll go into there in a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and go into 
operating room three, which is actually quite clean and set up and ready to go. So again, same lights, same mounts. We have new, these are called equipment booms, and they are just, you can touch them with just a finger and move them. They are so wonderful. So we have the latest uh, laparoscopic equipment. We have, it's all 4K HD. The system's called 1688, it's Striker, and it is truly the latest and greatest on the market. Um, again, everything is in one place. The nurses have access to everything immediately. The other feature that I didn't talk about in the other room is that we have a 55 inch screen at the foot of the bed so that we can either run x-ray pictures up there or we can run um, the laparoscopic uh, video system as well. Uh, the other feature that these rooms have is this, is this is a special arm called a VPA arm. And what this does is it allows us to hook um, special machinery into here, into the, the DVI cable as well as the electrical. And then we're able to route that straight to whatever monitor that the physician wants that, that image on. So this, was, this is great. This keeps the cords off the floor and allows the nurses to be much, it's just much safer in these rooms. It's, just, it's a much safer place. So uh, the nurses desk, they was all designed by nurses and the scrub techs and our uh, inventory supply people, our patient care techs, the staff was incredibly instrumental in all of this. They designed everything down to where things are hung on the wall. Um, it was really great because uh, this is the first project where staff input was actually taken into account and used and they can see the fruits of their labor. So they designed the space that they're working in. Um, their desks, they actually designed their desks and I've never seen anything like this before. It's really very user friendly. So um, they have the surgeon computer because the surgeons used to like to get on their computer and they're able to let the surgeon do their, their orders. They can continue to chart and then they're able to run all the equipment straight from this, there's a touch panel back here. So it's a really, really efficient system for them. Uh, it makes them very happy. So again, they designed the space and it works very, very well. We're gonna go ahead and go into our center core area. So a center core is where we keep all of our supplies and instruments. When we built this, we didn't have a lot of space. So we were very excited to bring this space out. We almost quadrupled our space in here. So if you can see all of our, these are instruments that you're looking at right now. We are no longer allowed to stack instruments on top of each other. That is a Joint Commission and Center for Medicaid and Medicare rule. So we have a great system for all of the heavy trays. Again, we have supplies all the way through, very long area. Um, the staff worked about eh, 20 hours to get everything in here and sorted, and they did a fantastic job. We moved just Saturday the 10th. So we're very excited about all of this and this really great space, um, very organized. The downside is that staff now, nobody knows where anything is. <laughs> so um, a lot of grace and a lot of patience. So uh, hang in there with us. Um, Next, we're gonna go into our hybrid room. This room is cath lab ready. We, ha we have a wonderful housekeeper cleaning our room for us here. We're doing a virtual tour. You can say hi. <laughs> so this room has the capability to eventually be done for heart caths where they put stents in your hearts, those kinds of things. Um, and uh, let's get this out of your way. So as, Chris, as Kristen goes over to the left there, you can see the C-arm machine. It's called a C-arm because it's shaped like a C and the bed and the, and the machine work well together. So the, the C-arm can x-ray anywhere through this whole machine, through the whole bed, I'm sorry, and you can, the, the bed moves, the C-arm moves, it's, it's quite intricate in how it, it moves. Um, if I'm lucky, I will get it to move. Nope. Nope, they've already shut it off. <laughs> so this room is 
it's different than the rest because it's bigger, it's got more capabilities to use this, this radiology piece of equipment. Um, the walls are all lead lined, so it's very safe in here. There's no radiation that's gonna go out. Uh, when Kristen gets around, we're gonna have, you'll see windows, and it's the hybrid, it's the control room for the hybrid room. So we have leaded glass windows. Nurses can chart back there and still feel safe because there's nothing back there that can hurt them as far as radiation goes. The only other thing that is a little bit different about this room is that the 55 inch monitor that's mounted on the walls in the other four rooms is actually mounted on a separate arm because if and when we do turn this into a, a cath lab or, or for vascular, anything vascular with pacemakers or anything like that, the, physician, the surgeons, they want that right, at the, right by the table. They want it right there. So um, that has the capability to come up right there. The other piece we have is we have lead shields that you can use to protect yourself. So they're fantastic. You can see through them. Uh, you can move them, touch them. Um, they work really, really well. So, same rooms. We're going to probably go on out to the hallway. All of our doors are automatic. So, no touch, automatic openers. They, hope they keep the doors open for staff to get patients in and out from. One of the great features of this hallway is that we've got windows to the northeast. That is a huge staff satisfier. We did have to frost the bottom windows because of the patients going by, so you didn't want anybody to be able to see in. However, we get a lot of natural light and we get to see the sky, if nothing else. We'll know if it's dark, we'll know if it's light, we'll know if it's raining or snowing. So we have some really great space here. I'm going to open this door. This is one of our storage areas. It's the smallest one that we have, however, it stores a lot of things. We've got the two mobile C-arms. This is what radiology brings in for other cases that we need um, x-rays on. Uh, we've got our Mako robot back in the corner in the blue. We've got some batteries charging, some pieces of equipment that we use pretty frequently. So one of the really nice storage rooms that we have. We have three, actually. We have an old one that we kept. We got some new space that is a little farther away, and then we have this one in between these two rooms. The last room we have is OR4, and it's set up a little bit differently, and I'll tell you why. So with moving, we are losing our current endoscopy space and our minor procedure room. So we had to have somewhere to put the minor procedures and the colonoscopies and, and EGDs, the esophagogastrostomies. And so this room is set up to be able to do the scopes. Uh, the physicians, we bring the patient back here, they get their scope done, and then they go right back to outpatient surgery again. So this room is set up a little bit different just because of the procedures that we're doing in here and what it's dedicated for. When we get our new renovated space, this will go back to a regular operating room and it will look like everything else that you've already seen. So next we're going to take you into our sterile processing department. They are not complete yet and they have been absolute saints. They have had to live through renovation as well as new construction. And as any of you know, if you have redone a house or rebuilt or added on, it can be a very trying time. Lots of noise, lots of mess. They have been superstars with all of this and I couldn't be prouder of them. What they do is so vital to everything that we do. They're the first start of infection control for the operating rooms. They make sure that our instruments are clean, that they are working properly, and that they are ready for use with the physicians when the surgeons. So we aren't going to go in on the clean side. We're just going to go on the, this is called the dirty side. So this is where the dirty instruments come. But as you can see right there, we have triple sinks and they're actually height adjustable, which is great because then if staff is shorter or taller, they can adjust them. And this one doesn't want to go up, but it will. It takes a minute to start. 
We have two doubles or two triple sinks, one on each side, so they're able to go up. The other thing we have is a new ultrasonic machine. Come on. Kind of looks like it's coming from Star Wars. It allows us to to it, to clean a lot of instruments. So an ultrasonic cleaner, it's it's just what it is. It's an ultrasound, so it's it's shock waves with water to break up any particulates that might be on the instruments, any blood or bone or any any debris that's left over. So. We are ready to do just about anything with this. The manufacturers also recommend that we use ultrasonic on almost every piece of equipment. So we are now able to do very high volumes of that, which we were not able to do before. The other piece of equipment that is brand new to this hospital is a cart wash. And it's, it's a phenomenal piece of equipment. It's so much fun. So as Kristen gets over, there's, she'll see two carts as well. So we're able to put instruments in there. We're able to put pans in there. We're able to put uh, big volumes of, of instruments and the case carts uh, that we use to put our procedures in. So this is exciting because this takes away the manual process from sterile processing and they are able to just wash everything. And so everything is washed the exact same way every single time. So very exciting for that. Place that. <laughs> so we're going to head back down and we're going to go through the operating room and we're going to go into the recovery room now. The old space that we had for the recovery room was enough to hold four patients uh, very closely together. It was very, it was very difficult and uh, we, uh, we needed some more space. Uh, we're doing more with patients, we're doing more epidurals, more blocks, and we needed that space to be able to be safe for patients, have a good space for nurses to work, be able to provide the critical care that they're, they're needing. And they're centrally located right with the operating room, so we're able to come from either side and come into here. And we're into the operating, or into the recovery room. So we have three of our great PACU nurses here. We have Mary Romshek, or Katrina Spees, and Kayla Gehring is our service line coordinator. As you look around, we now have eight new bays for patients. Much bigger space, much better layout. Uh, again, this allows the nurses to be a lot safer with their patients. It allows for a lot more quiet time with your patient as well. The room that we're going to be looking at on the right is an isolation room, and this is new for the recovery room as well. It's a great addition because of COVID patients. So this room turns into a negative pressure room when we turn a key. Um, it allows us to also use this for pediatrics a lot so that we can shut the doors so that the family can be have private time with the patient. And again, great space. And the light up in the top is Nemo, which is a child's favorite. So made sure that we had a good, uh, a good light panel up there for children as well. So excellent space, great space for all of the patients. The other thing that is new for the recovery room is they will be pre-oping inpatients. So if, if a patient is coming from acute care and is going to be having surgery, these nurses are going to bring the patient down ahead of time, finish it, getting them ready. So that way that'll save time for the operating room staff. It'll also allow the ACU nurses to free up some of their time because they're very, very busy, especially right now. So we designed it, again, nurses designed this whole unit. The shape is, is, was based on their design and they are working in the space that they designed. I can't say that enough, it's, it's beautiful space. And next, we're going to be in the north hallway of the outpatient surgery department, again, previously known as Same Day Services. We'll uh, go into one of the rooms here shortly, but as you can see, we've got nurses stations on both sides of the hallway. We have a station so that all nurses can see what's going on with all the patients. Our new rooms are about 25 square feet bigger than they were. 
We have a door and a half, which we didn't have, which allows us to get in much easier. Bigger space, better family space. Um, we even thought of details like putting USB ports into the plugins for the family so they can just plug in a USB cord to charge. Um, and you know, some of those little tiny details you don't even think about, but they're a really nice feature. Um, one of the other features is the bathrooms. We have a shared bathroom between two rooms, which we had before, which is very unusual for most places. And the, the big feature with these, uh, with these is that it has a jack and jill lock, so you can lock both doors. And the light will turn red. It did. And then when you, when you open the door, it turns green. And another concern uh, nurses have is that if a patient feels that they're able to do it by themselves, get in the bathroom by themselves, what happens if they fall and they haven't got the door opened? So one of the features that we have is we're actually able to flip this and we can bring the door out all the other, the, completely the other way. So that if we need to get in there for a patient need, then we can get right in there. So. Um, Oops. A great safety feature for our patients, especially if they would fall. Again, great lighting. We have different panels in the ceilings in all the rooms. Both pre-op and PACU have those uh, special panels in the centers of the room so that as patients are laying there, they have something to look at besides white tiles and lights. All the lights are adjustable and everything is motion sensitive, so you can walk into a room and turn the lights on just with walking in, which is great. As you go this direction, we have a new lactation room that will also be a relaxation room. It's not, it's not done yet, but it's, we're working on it. We have a new patient exit. So families, we'll still You'll still check in at registration from the front of the hospital, but when you leave, instead of having to go all the way across the hospital, you'll be able to come out through this exit. Family can drive up right next to it. Um, the concrete is heated so that we're able to not have uh, worries about slipping and sliding in the winter because it is a north exit. So it's a very nice feature. Uh, you know, when you're having surgery or having a procedure, you don't really look good and you don't feel good and you don't want anybody looking at you for the most part. So. Uh, Pre-op has a new staff lounge as well. First time that they've ever had one, so they are super excited about this. They have their own lockers, they have a nice break room now, which they just did not have before. They had very, very small space. And now they have a great way to be able to get away, take a, take, have some downtime, take a breather, have lunch. Uh, it's a beautiful room, beautiful space. So. Very, very excited about that. We're going to be heading towards the new desk area for the outpatient surgery department. They had about a four foot desk before. This desk is 26 feet long. So if that gives you a little bit of a, an idea. So this is where their charge nurse sits. They have the central monitoring station that they're able to watch all the patients on. We have a new nutrition area in the back so that we're able to offer family and patients drinks, snacks, foods. You know, if they're nauseated after surgery, we can give them something to eat. Very, very nicely located. We have the middle hallway. So we have the 15 rooms over here. One through 101 through 107 is in the south hallway. This is the middle hallway, so this is 108 through 111. And then 112 through 115 is where we came through first. They have a new med room. So that allows them to have quiet time to get their medications ready. Makes them have a safe area for that as well. Uh, if you've noticed it all, we have natural lighting coming in on every single hallway down here. It's absolutely fantastic. Who doesn't like light? Who doesn't like to be able to see if it's daylight or nighttime? We're going to be going into the bariatric room now. Come on. So this room is 
bigger. And we call it a bariatric room, although it's not for necessarily bariatric patients. We have a significant population that needs to have a, a Hoyer lift, a lift to help them get up if they're bedridden, if they're wheelchair ridden. So we have, this room was set up specifically so that we could lift patients, put the patients on a lift and get them all the way to the bathroom, all the way back to their bed. It's on a beautiful track. And then once you get over the bed area, then this, the, whole, the whole thing moves. It's got a remote, so we're able to put, go up and down with it. Um, and it's generic, so you can put just about any lift on it. So patients that are coming from the homes or from their own home with loved ones, we're able to take care of and not have injuries for staff. So this is a very exciting room. And this is the south hallway. So as you look towards those double doors at the end of the hall, that is the only way into the operating room for patients to get there from this area. So staff is definitely getting their steps. Um, and they're just able to very nicely move. Again, clear hallways, beautiful floors. Um, Everything is just, you know, I, I, I truly don't believe that we could have done this any better. This unit as well was designed by the staff and all of their input was gotten and used. And then the last place we're going to go is out to the new family waiting area. We are very humbled by the Mead family and their generous donation to the surgical expansion. I was fortunate enough to have a, take, do a private tour with Bob and Gail Mead a few weeks, just a couple weeks ago. It was, it was thrilling. I was part of the, it was one of the best parts about all of this. So we got to take their picture by the sign. Um, again, we are thrilled and humbled by their generosity. So the family waiting room has a, uh, couple of really nice features. We have two consultation rooms now. We only had one before, so we have two. And while you won't be able to see it inside, we actually have whiteboards in there because a lot of the doctors like to draw. And so they're able to draw for the families and uh, show them pictures. <laughs> we still have the charging station there. Uh, we have a pediatric area as well. The only thing missing is probably the thing that people want the most, and they want coffee. So we are because it's still, we're renovating through the uh, open doorway over there, that's where the coffee will be in the end of the, when the end of all of this. So uh, for right now, the, the cafeteria staff is nice enough to bring us carafes of coffee for the day. So we have bathrooms right across the hall, and we also have uh, water with fill, bottle fill station right there. So big satisfier for people. They're able to just fill their, their water bottles or their cups with filtered water. Um, it's, it's just gorgeous, you guys. I hope you enjoy watching this because this was five years in the making. We started talking about this in November of 15 and we broke ground in April of 19. And October 10th we moved and October 12th we had our first cases in surgery. So thank you for taking this tour with me. If you ever have any questions or if you are not able to be part of the group that took tours from the beginning when we were able to give big group tours, please let me know. I'd be happy to get you in scrubs and get you back here and show this off to you because I still get goosebumps talking about it because it's so exciting.